Hello, my name is Jeremy Dixon, and I'd like to thank Cardiff Met Reading Series for inviting me to share some of my poetry. I'm going to be reading a few poems from my debut poetry collection, A Voice Coming From Then, which has just been published by Rackney Press. Content warning. The book deals with themes and expressions of physical and verbal bullying, swearing, homophobia, homophobic language, queerphobia, attempted suicide and suicide. On Wednesday 13th of June 1979, three months after my 15th birthday, I waited until Dad drove Mum into Cardiff for her night shift as a staff nurse then went into the kitchen and stole the paracetamol tablets she stored under the sink. After taking them, I fell asleep on the sofa in my bedroom. I woke up suddenly at about 2am and proceeded to vomit for the next six hours, which is probably why I'm still alive today. I see a voice coming from then as the note that at the time I didn't understand myself enough to write. The first poem in the book and the first poem you're going to hear is a spell of protection for young Jeremy, for old Jeremy, for Jeremy the poet, and for every reader and for every listener of the poems. Spring Hill Jack appears throughout the book and he's a Victorian urban legend. First sighted in 1837, he has a demonic appearance with clawed hands, fiery eyes and the ability to leap great distances and heights. For me, he also represents that part of myself that enabled me to survive my suicide attempt. Casting the runes with spring-heeled jack. We are here from the future. We are here in the past. Our demon fingers scraping out your throat. Where pills still taste the same, still absorb your teenage spit. So even when you can't, remember your body. Be grateful for the gallbladder, that your gut can still pulse. Be grateful for a liver strong enough to cope. Be grateful for a gag reflex, for the stomach that overruled. This is a binding to keep us safe. Now, this is a poem about one of my most favorite poems. Wraiths. So this is a poem where I meet Anne Sexton when I am three years old and lost. I am three years old and lost, and she grabs me in the foyer of the Royal Festival Hall in London. Anne Sexton grabbing me when I run away from my mother in the foyer of the Royal Festival Hall. And I run straight into the sheer legs of Anne Sexton, talking to men, a circle of men around her. I run straight into her legs and she laughs, drops down level with my face and laughs, picks me up and swings me on her hips, swaying on Anne Sexton's hips as she strides the foyer of the Royal Festival Hall, looking for a mother and recognizing my mother by reading the fear in an unfamiliar face. Reads my mother handing me over with a smile. 
a smile and the slightest tap on my mother's stomach, her tapping and saying, let's hope this one's a girl. A girl and a slight tap and a cigarette walking away. Anne Sexton walking back to my the men and my mother staring and recognizing that smile on a spot lit poster, a poster for poetry in the foyer of the Royal Festival Hall. So this is a poem where I meet Anne Sexton in London when I'm three years old, when we are both unmourned. So since primary school, I was always bullied. It became a part of everyday life and I was so ashamed by it, I tried to keep it all secret. The bullying got significantly worse when our family moved to South Wales when I was in my early teens. And this is a poem about school. Buddies. You're playing choke games at lunchtime. Holding your breath with Tim behind, hugging your chest until you slump to the floor. Someone says your mouth was twitching. The one out longest should be unbeatable. We surround you at the top of the quad's concrete steps. The safety of home, one push away. So just a content warning for the following poem, which relates to my suicide on attempt when I was 15. And when I could see no other way of making all the bullying stop. The poem doesn't go into specific detail, but please feel free to just scroll ahead if you wish. Numbers. Doctors queried just how many I had counted down exactly between gulps of orange juice. Planning to leave in the slow change between Wednesday and Thursday, between mum's night shift and dad waking to pick her up. Instead, I begin to puke. Sometimes the universe sways, allows a recalculation. So this is a poem about being at college when things started to change. Student Union Disco. He would leap up to windmill to Blue Monday, do thigh slaps in time, only to realize too late it was actually love reaction by divine. The same slow build up, that snare so similar. It was hard to tell, a homage you could call it being generous. So he stops in his tracks, hesitant of the dance, like bumping into each other after closing on College Road, invited in for tea and toast, just sitting there, staring at his Lloyd Cole quiff, unsure of what music was playing. 
Here is a poem about being out on the lash with my demon. Night clubbing with spring heeled Jack. Here I am on the wrong side of the velvet rope. Push past Purr's spring heeled Jack. Here at the bar are new people to know. Be a bitch, grins spring heeled Jack. Here I am too cool to dance. Quite right, nods spring heeled Jack. Here is the man who let you in free. More drinks, shrieks spring heeled Jack. And here is the man who smiles. Drink more, roars spring heeled Jack. And I slap the base of the man's pint and oops, smirks spring heeled Jack. And we howl as beer splatters his face and leg it, yells spring heeled Jack. Here is what leaps beneath my skin. Here is how we terrify. A voice coming from then also contains images, collages, and some facts. And this is one of them. A statistic from the report, accepting adults reduce suicide attempts amongst LGBTQ youth, published by the Trevor Project in 2019. Just one accepting adult in an LGBTQ plus young person's life can reduce the risk of suicide by 40%. Uh, just another content warning. My final poem relates to the public abuse of queer people, but it does not use specific abusive language. And also a note on the use of the word queer. Queer is a word loaded with emotional and historical meanings. Some people see it as a, see it as a slur, others reclaim it as a source of pride. I use it here to identify those who exist outside of heterosexualism and to embrace wider ideas of strangeness, inclusivity, activism, and acceptance. Outside. I'm licking ice cream on a packed college green. And this group starts chanting, I bet you love Queen. Never failing to humiliate. Takes me right back to being too scared to use public transport. Just walking Rufus, it can start. From a car, a lorry driving past, mortified by fruit and water bottles. Nearly every queer person I know has been called so many words. Now, when taking the train, I hide my pride badge. If caught flaunting, I freeze. So that concludes me reading poems. Now I'm just going to answer a few questions that uh, were sent over to me. So the first one is, how would you describe your writing process? Well, my writing process will change depending on circumstance. Last year, it was all about writing and editing the poems for a voice coming from then 
Well, at the moment, most of my creative energy is geared towards promoting the book. So I'm doing readings both online and via Zoom and also recording videos like this one. I still have ideas for new poems though, and I jot them down in my notebook. And when I have time, I tuck them up as first drafts. I have a Word document full of poems in progress, which I'll edit until I feel they're ready for feedback. And they will, and then will aim to submit them to poetry magazines and competitions if appropriate. I also make artist books as Hazard Press and sometimes new book projects will generate new poems to be included with the project or it could be the other way around and poems suggest a new book arts project for me. Next question, how do you edit your work? Well, editing is so important. And when I first started writing, no one had told me about editing. And I just thought poems arrived fully formed when you put pen to paper, just like they do in the movies, which of course they don't. So I'm very lucky to be part of the Cardiff Queer Writers Group, which is open to any writers in South Wales who identify as queer. We meet regularly online and I'll take along a final draft of a poem to read and to get feedback on. So nearly all the poems in a voice coming from then were discussed by the group um, and some of the poems were edited and changed very dramatically as a result. Um, I also find reading a poem at an open mic like uh, Seren's First Thursday is always helpful in the editing process as you can really start to get a feel of how an audience responds to a poem or if they don't or if they get a bit lost or if the poem goes on for too long. So um, live readings are a very important part of that editing process for me. So the question is what book or author has helped to inspire or influence your work? Well, a voice coming from then um, has been influenced, inspired by the books and work of a, of a number of poets. Um, I think The Man with Night Sweats by Tom Gunn was a very influential book to me. It was the first poetry collection that's totally taught, caught my attention and in which I saw aspects of myself. Um, it also had a whole section of poetry themed around the AIDS crisis. Uh, and that made me realise how you could uh, link poems together in such a way. Uh, also, the Book of Frank, um, alongside a lot of oh, their other work by C.A. Conrad, um, for the surrealism, for the exploration of an alter ego, um, and the ideas of how you generate poetry and how important it is to be located in the body and located in the now. So C.A. Conrad, very influential on me. Uh, Zero Gravity by Gwyneth Lewis uh, was another influential collection with the idea of weaving one story and three theme throughout a whole uh, poetry book. And also I obviously adore and Sexton. Um, so for a voice coming from then, um, I reread all her books um, and even discovered a couple of children's books that she um, wrote with Maxine Cumin. Next question, what are you currently reading? Well, that's quite easy. Um, first one is I Remember by Joe Brainard. It's a collection of tiny fragments of memories each introduced by the phrase, I remember. So it was first begun in 1970 and expanded and added to over the years. And it's really a hypnotic, moving, funny and wonderful book. And the other book I'm reading is Three Martini Afternoons at the Ritz by Gail Crowther, which is about the early friendship between Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton. So there's a bit of a theme. Okay, so the last question is, what advice do you have for current creative writing students? 
okay take every opportunity offered to you as a student never turn anything down however much you've got on meet as many people as you can join in as many activities as you can college is a golden time and you should try and take from it as much as possible also poetry is really about people and communities and support so always try to be nice to each other i'd also say try not to undermine yourself and never belittle your own poetry practice reading your poetry time yourself film yourself push past any self-doubt and inhibitions about reading in public a poem exists on its own terms it should always be about the poem not about the poet you are there just to serve the poem so always try and give it the best chance you can also final one learn how to make your own poetry books make your own zines make your own pamphlets then you can take them along to book fairs when they start up again and you're starting to be your own publisher your own way of getting your work out there for people to actually read so thank you for allowing me to spend some time with you sharing my poetry and uh, answering questions thank you <laughs>